Good morning, how are y'all doing? Well, will you join me in welcoming everyone who's watching via video, who might be watching online? Big round of applause. We're so glad that you're here with us. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Liz. And um, just to give you a little more information about who I am, I'm 28 years old, and I have a mom and dad who live in Jacksonville. I have an older sister, a younger sister. They also live here. I've been dating a guy for a little over a year. Yes. I like to call him God's Will. Uh -uh. Like it? Like it? His name is Will, by the way. <laughs> half of you got it because you knew his name, and then the other half was like, okay, that's not funny. Um, <laughs> And so have a serious relationship, and also here I'm on staff at Celebration. I'm the sisterhood coordinator, which means that I coordinate everything to do with sisterhood. So sisterhood morning, sisterhood nights, sisterhood united nights, sisterhood in the city outreaches, sisterhood mission trips, sisterhood mentoring, sisterhood leadership download, lots of sisterhood stuff, can you tell? Also, um, I serve and connect every weekend. I also serve at Sub 30. I teach the God First Life classes for Sub 30. I lead two mentorship groups and I'm leading two mission trips this year. Now, I did not tell you all that to brag on myself, and I did not tell you all that to say why I'm worthy to be on this stage, because honestly, I'm not worthy to be on this stage. <laughs> Let's be real. But I told you that because what we're talking about today is about the weight that we all carry. And so that, personal, professional, those are some of the weights that I carry. Those are some of the things that I hold in my hands. And they're not negative in and of themselves, are they? You know, obviously I work on staff at a church. That's not a negative thing. You know, we have things, we have these weights, these burdens that we carry in each and every one of you in this room. You each have a weight that you carry. You might be a wife. You might be a daughter, a sister. You, you may have a full-time job. You may have a part-time job. You, you may stay at home and have that full-time job. You know, there, there are all different weights that we carry and burdens that we have. And that's part of what we're going to be talking about today. The title of this message is Pace Setters and Sabbath Stealers. Pace Setters and Sabbath Stealers. Now, pace setters, what we're talking about, we're going to be talking about the, these for the next few weeks. There's several different pace setters in our lives, things that set the pace of our lives. And it's important for you to know that these things that set the pace for our lives, again, they're not necessarily negative. They, they're going to set the pace no matter what, whether they set them in a positive way or they set them in a negative way. And so we have several different topics that we're going to cover and things that set the pace in our lives. And so it's important also to know that you have to be intentional about setting the pace for your life. We've been talking about living in the rhythms of grace. We've been talking about allowing our lives to be oriented toward God and letting him set the pace for our lives. But you have to be intentional in that. Some of you may be looking at your life and thinking, okay, this, this seems impossible. <laughs> you know, okay, you're telling me that I'm supposed to take a day out of the week to rest? Do you know what my schedule looks like? You know, I know for moms, it's like, okay, well, yeah, a day of rest during the week is great, but I still am gonna have to wake up at six or seven in the morning. I'm still gonna have to get breakfast. I'm still gonna have to have lunch. I'm still gonna have to have nap time, dinner, bath time, bedtime. Those things don't go away just because I'm taking a day of rest. And so how do I make that look for me? That seems pretty impossible. Or what you're asking of me, what you're telling me seems impossible. But Aren't you glad that what's impossible with man is possible with God? And that when he commands it in his word, that means he's going to make a way for it to happen. And it's all about leaning into him. That's what this whole series is about, is leaning on the Holy Spirit and listening to his pace for your life. Listening to where he's telling you, you're pushing yourself too hard. You're taking on a burden that isn't from me. You're doing something out of your own strength and you're not relying on my strength. And so that's what we're talking about, being intentional. And, you know, we can very easily, these things that are pace setters, we can so easily put them on autopilot, can't we? We can so easily say, well, this is just how it is, and it's, it's good. I'm just not going to worry about that anymore, and it's, it's just part of life. It's just part of how the way that it is. But don't you know, when something's on autopilot, you can't make adjustments for the seasons of life. You can't make adjustments for the winds that come and the storms that come. And so you've got to be intentional about these things. You've got to say that I'm going to set the pace. I'm going to say what this pace is going to be through what the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And so you've got to be intentional. It can't just be 
let it come as it comes or go with the flow. Um, we have to lean into God and let him establish the rhythm of our lives. And I really want to start with the verse, uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. And I know we've already read this in this series, but it's such a great and foundational verse. Um, it's the one that says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so what we're talking about today is our yoke and our burden. And we kind of use the word yoke throughout this series, but really it's interchangeable with burden. Um, for those of you who don't know, I know pastors talked about this before and we've talked about it in sub 30, Pastor Josh Turner has. And a yoke is basically... In the olden times, in Jesus' days, it would, it would attach around the neck of an animal, and it would have a second hole where another animal would be attached to it. So it would actually yoke two animals together. And so that's why in the Bible it says, don't be unequally yoked. So you don't want your spouse to be in a different spiritual level than you are because you're yoked with that person now. Like, you, wherever he goes, you've got to go. And wherever you go, he's got to go. And so you're yoked to each other. And so a yoke actually connects you to someone else. But it's also connected to a burden that you're carrying, a load that you're carrying. And so the yoke speaks to the yoke and who you're yoked to, but it also speaks to the burden that you're carrying and the burden that you have. And so in that verse right there, we see, um, so the first thing is the pace setter that we're talking about today, in case you missed that blank, I kind of said it without saying it was a blank, is your yoke. Um, your yoke is the pace setter. And so your yoke is anything that you're carrying, and it's also who you're connected to. So your yoke is anything, anything that you're involved in. So that could be the job that you're in, um, the husband that you have, the kids that you have, um, the, the weight that you're carrying in the home, um, whether it's cleaning house, doing the budget, doing the finances. Um, it could be the, like I said, the career that you have. It could also be the ministry that you're involved in. Um, if you serve outside of that, if you serve on Sundays, if you serve here at Sisterhood, um, if you s maybe lead a small group throughout the week, that's, that's a yoke. That's, that's part of your burden. That's part of what you're carrying. So it's all these things um, add up to this, this yoke or this burden that you're carrying. And what we see in Matthew 11:30 is that the yoke of Christ is easy. The yoke of Christ is easy and the burden of Christ is light. And so the yoke of Christ is easy and the burden of Christ is light. Um, I want to read this verse. It's actually at the top of your page. And I'm going to read the entire verse here. Um, the top actually cuts out a middle portion, but I, I just wanted to read this whole thing. So it'll take just a second to read all of it, but I thought it was important. So what I'm reading is Exodus chapter 18, verses 17 through 23. What it says is, so Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out, for this thing is too much for you. You are not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God will be with you. Stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God, and you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and work and the work they must do. Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, as in Moses, and then all the small matter, every small matter, they shall themselves judge. So it will be easier for you, for they will bear the burden with you. If you do this thing and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all this people will also go to their place in peace. So there's a lot in that scripture. I know that was a lot that I just read. Um, but really what it's saying is, God was telling, through, through um, his, his father-in-law, God was telling Moses that what you're carrying is too much. What you've taken on is too much. But he was saying, if you'll listen to this advice, then you will be able to endure. And so with our yoke, with, our, with the burdens that we have, um, some of us in here, we have too much. Maybe all of us in here have too much. We're carrying too much. There's too much on our plate. There's too much that we have. So what God is saying is you've got to look intentionally at a few different things, who you can empower, who you can delegate to. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you, and then you will be able to endure. He says, if you do this thing, if you listen to him and do what he's asking you, then you will be able to endure, and you'll have have the longevity that you want. You'll be able to last the distance. 